the threat to sail. Sandra Casanova, number seven, Lacey Phillips, number five, Chantoy Donaldson, number two, Lafoya Shaw, number 19, Deja A. Chigoli, number nine, Rihanna Samuel, number 11, Chanel Thomas, Number six, the actor Bailey. Number 14, Alia Buddha. And number four, Chelsea Boyd. That is Patrick Lennon for the Central High Team, which is coached by Adrian Reed. The Patrick McPhee team. We'll start with the Jane Anderson, number 40. Number 19, Liana Park. Number 9, Aiba Cohen. Number 14, Angelica Parkinson. Number 11, Julie Ann Howard. Number 5, Shane Park. Number three, Tyra Finch. Number eight, Janaya Taylor. Number five, Amelia Watson. Number ten, Delia White. And number seven, Leah Williams. The starting lineup there for the Bobby Massey team. Welcome to the Stadium East Complex. It's for the 2023 Tip Friendly Society Schoolgirls Football Competition. This is the opening day where we have two games on the cards. The first game featuring last year's beaten finalist Garvin Marcel up against Central High, what promises to be a mouth watering clash and a Clarendon derby, if you can call it that. But it's going to be interesting though on the day though because Garvin Marcel, let me give you the starting 11. They have a formation of four. 4-2. You have uh, Anderson in goal. Sajay Anderson, her first name. Angelica Farkerson in the defense. She plays center back. Now, Shawnee Taylor, also center back. Shanae Hunch wears a number 15 jersey. You have Tyra Smith, number 3. Dahlia White, 10. You have Leah Williams, 7. Kima Cowan, 9. Julian Howard, the number 11 jersey. And Amelia Watson, 12. And Yana Barton, the number 19 jersey. You see the teams are walking out led by the officials separating both and we give you the names of the officials in a very short while. Let me give you the starting 11 for Central. You have Kayla Tate in goal wearing the number 17 jersey. They're in the brown top, brown shorts and white socks. That's Central. Tushal Casanova, number 10. She is the captain and she plays centre back. You have Aliyah Buddha, number 14, her partner in crime, in the centre-back position. You have Shantoy Donaldson, number 5. Latoya Shaw wears a number 2 jersey. She's a left-back on the team. Lacey Phillips, number 7. Yandre Chamberlain, 19. Chanel Thomas, 11. You have Chelsea, Chelsea Gordon, 4. And Bailey, Bianca is her first name, number 6. And Rihanna Summers, number 9. Interesting formation, though, for that team. 5-3-2. So you know that Central's coach Adrian Reeves is going to be playing defensive. He's not necessarily um what, what did I say no thinking that his team can pull out a pull off a victory. Confidence streaming over, not at this present time. Garvey in yellow top, black numbers at the back, and yellow shorts and yellow socks. I mentioned before though. They did go to the final last year when they met Excelsior. They got beaten 3-0 in that final. However, that is last year. That is 2022. 
We're all about 2023. The officials on hand, Yvette Stevenson. She is the head of the lead referee. The first assistant, Tamilia Otti. She is from Kasafa. The second assistant, Ashenique Richards, also from Kasafa. And Carvel Banton is the fourth official. There you see Stevenson spinning the toss. And just to say though, she is from Manchester, while the other officials are from Kasafa. Interesting look, Casanova, strong defender to show Casanova wearing the number 10 jersey. She holds the defense line for Central. Central did not take part in the competition last year. Last time they took part was back in 2019. Actually, they took part in 2020. But if you can remember 2020, about three games or three rounds were played in 2020 before it was halted because of COVID. And no games or no teams were played the year after in 2021. Competition was not held. So two years of the competition not being held after it was started back in 1998. Yeah. So this year is 25 years since it started in 1998. And the second team that will be on the cards, though, they have won it more time than any other team. They won it 10 times. Their name is Central, yet to win. So to Garvin Marcel. Garvin Marcel was unbeaten last year until they reached the final when they met Excelsior or they lost that matchup. Central. Start of proceedings, kicking from right to left, though. Tried to bulldoze her way. It was Howard from Gav Maceo. It seems like they're losing the want to lose the possession central. The captain putting the ball forward was Casanova. Broken up by the strong captain. That's Dahlia White for Gav Maceo. To raise the number 10 jersey. Turning beautifully is Williams was giving away the possession I you see a lot of this though it won't be free-flowing just as yet the first game of the season so things need to be ironed out somewhat foul free kick awarded this to Garvey the funny thing is Gav Marcel they were talking a lot last season after they went to the final unbeaten blow away everyone that they met last year free kick to be taken by taylor inside the penalty air this could be the first choice for well, the defense of central clears into touch a throw to garvey you no know, said last year they were dominant in the region traveling through to the final but it seemed like they were going to upset the apple cart. White puts it forward. It's a strike by White on the bounce collected by goalkeeper Tate. First half action in this Tip Friendly Society Schoolgirls football competition. First game of the 2023 season. That's a foul. Easy call for referee Stevenson. Watson, who. He's a tricky player, the number 12. Smith wants to take the free kick. And that she will do. Garvey, they are the favorites. Ball floated inside the penalty area. Brought down. But cleared again by the central defense. Took her, taking her sweet time, though. But the clearance comes, but she has given away the possession. Going forward. Howard shot taken oh that's a beautiful goal off the right boot of white the first goal of the matchup Garva Maceo leading by one goal to nil in minute three this tip friendly society schoolgirls football competition we said before they are the favorites to take this matchup after cruising through last year they want to start on the same path Expectations are high that it may be a goal feast for Garvey. Playing the 4-4-2. Four, four, 
You hardly see teams play 4-4-2, though. That was back in the 70s, 60s, and 80s. Formations have changed since then. Right wing, left wing. Evading two defenders, why? And striking home. I think, though, central goal will be under siege today. In the meantime, Cowan picks it up on the left-hand side, turns beautifully. Skips over, no one challenge. Was it right back to Smith? It goes forward. Puts it between three defenders, though. A bit wide. Wanting a give and go. There you see the goal scorer. A brilliant strike from her. Delia White. She's a skipper of the Gav Maceo team. Look at the two teams, though. Two number 10s. Skipper, one playing central midfield, the so other the playing defender. Coming in the third minute, the Macias, number 10. So the ball goes forward. Right, the scorer. It's now overhit once one. again. Central high. The second assistant. Yeah. That's Richards. And you see referee Stevenson. Nice and easy breeze on this glorious Wednesday afternoon. A plethora of games will be played in the competition tomorrow. But only two games being played today. Gav Maceo looking the stronger of the two teams so far. Early pickings in this matchup. And they're giving it right back to Garvey. The goal scorer White wants to take a long throw downfield. Cleared. Will be another throw. White again, as we see the coach of Garvey Maceo, Hibbert. That's pretty comfortable. White goes by one. She wins another throw for her team. But I don't think she should be the one taking the throws, though. She has a lethal ammunition, her right leg. Ball throw inside the penalty area. Over the goalkeeper's grasp. And bounces over the goal line for a goal kick. Not timed at all by goalkeeper Tate of Central. Shows the inexperience. In fact, the last time Central played back in 2020 they have lost all the players that were on the squad so it's a brand new team for central inexperienced team for central Garvey a give and go to white white brilliant pass from white like a needle in the haystack Still Garvey in possession inside the penalty area. Offside called. And we see the second assistant, as Richards, stopped the run from Garvey. The lead by one goal to nil. And the coach of Central, Adrian Reeves. I said before, though, the confidence was not so high. We spoke to Reeves earlier on, was playing defensive. They've given away the possession. Offside again. But what's happening though, you see Coach Hibbert at the lower end of your screen, is saying that it came off the defender. Referee Stevenson. Header from White of Garvey. Trying to build again, broken up momentarily. So, a high boot, so it will be a free kick for Garvey. Just outside the penalty area. And I have a feeling who will take this free kick. Will it be White? Getting some instructions from Coach Hibbert. Indeed, it's going to be white. Right. 
Wall is built by goalkeeper Tate. It's very inexperienced. White runs up, chips it, and almost, well, it goes by the right arm of goalkeeper Tate to double the advantage as Garvey there leads by two goals to nil in minute nine. That should have never happened at all. That was just a chip from White. Two goals so far from the right boot of White and two goals for Garvey. Goal number two for Garvey Masia. Coming in the minute. It's also goal number two for number 10. There you go. So White. White. Garvey Masia a two. Powerful striker. Central high. Yeah. Adding two to start off the 2023 season. It's a tip friendly or it's a tip friendly society schoolgirls football competition. The second goal coming in the ninth. Now we're seeing the goalkeeper and the Silver Guard Marcel. We never saw her just yet. First time the ball played inside the penalty area of Garvey. A lot of composure being shown but giving away the possession. Smith gave it away. And I think it came off the right boot of Thomas. No, says the assistant, it will be Central's ball. No, exactly. No, that's the right call because it came off the right boot of Thomas. In the meantime, Central, they have to defend extremely, extremely hard because goalkeeper Tate is very inexperienced. Because that second goal should not have gone in. As you see, chipping, goalkeeper behind the wall. What she has done, she has set the wall and stand behind it, and she's very short. So she can't see anything at all when it's played. And that is the main reason, though. If it was played over the wall, she'd have seen it, but it played below the wall to the right. And she was late. And she's not the quickest in the park. Central showing what they can do, trying to build with Gordon. And the flag going up offside called against Central. White goes forward, puts the play. As Garvey, they're building somewhat inside the penalty area. Oh, little, little fumble there from Williams. Could have easily taken a shot towards goal. And on top of the penalty area, but cleared into the referee's path. So Central will get back the ball. Referee not quick enough. Probably not play any dandy shiny when she was young. You just join us for the Issa to Friendly Society Speakers football competition. It's not a mistake. Garvey there leading by two goals to nil. And looking for their third. Well put inside the penalty area. Leading one, Howard. Turns it back, looking for White. White latches on. Oh, turning beautifully is White. Oh, it's cooling down the play. Looking back for Howard, swings inside the penalty area. Cleared by central defense, but not too far. Doing a bit too much though, Smith. Tucking from behind. Will be a free kick. That was Taylor, not Smith. Free kick to Garvey. Going towards goal, blocked by the wall or semi wall. Showing beautifully, going by one easily. Taylor puts it forward at the top of the penalty area, weaving her way and weaving her magic, but she's giving away the possession. 
want to counter Chamberlain. She wears a 19 for Central. Just giving it away. Right back to Coward. Who ran in a wall. Under the boot of Chamberlain. It will be Garvey's throw. Hebert, the coach. Doing some ball boy duties. Smith with a throw. Goes all the way though. Like it came off the body of Williams of Garvey. So it will be Central's throw. There you see Coach Hebert. Was concerned earlier on. Surprisingly, surprisingly using the 4-4-2 formation. Trying to muscle away was Williams of Garvey. Illegally. So says referee Stevenson. Referee Stevenson has been around for a very long time. As said before, she is from Manchester. Floating inside the penalty area. Goalkeeper Anderson is collecting on the bounce. 15 minutes gone inside of the first half. Still a 2 0 lead for Garby over Central. They have with the better team though. Combined passes from their defensive third. Composure has shown. Here comes Garby on the attack once again. Going by one, ball chipped inside the penalty area. Goalkeeper Tate deflecting away, but still inside the penalty area. A lazy shot taken. Not the greatest right foot effort. So Williams was running behind the play. And Cohen with that effort for Garvey. Hit the outside of the right boot, peeled away from the left upright, handing central the goal kick. Central does not look like they're ready for this competition. They're swarming on the possession, or so that when they have possession, they spread the ball. Turning beautifully. Turning away from two. Again is Smith. She's doing a little bit too much though. Oh, through the legs. Oh, but did not get it back though. But through the legs of Taylor. But the ball put back down. In the form of Cowan. Cowan tried to cut inside. But very good defensive play by Casanova. The defender. The captain for Central. Here's White again. Bagami puts it forward inside the penalty area. Shot taken, and that has to be the third goal. A brilliant strike from Julian Howard. 3 0 in favor of Garvey Maceo over Central. It's Issa Tip Friendly Society Schoolgirls Football Competition. The third goal coming in minute 17. Howard with her first. And she may expect more in this affair. Third goal coming in minute 17. So Number 11. Kick. That was a brilliant four. ball, though, from White. So One time zero. effort Three. from Central high. this young yeah. lady. Howard beat the outstretched arm of goalkeeper Tate. Had no chance whatsoever. From what she has shown so far. Here comes Garvey once again. They lead by three goals to nil. They've given away the possession. Barton was trying to latch on. Why the tackle from Barton? And she falls over. They miss the coming. As has been an interesting game so far for Garvey, not necessarily for Central. They have looked dis disorganized on the field. Sometimes you 
may see some scrappy play, but you see some formats to say that okay, they're trying, but they really do look disorganized. In the meantime, the speed of Cowan is telling on the day. Cowan tried to cut inside. Still, Cowan goes by one. But the ball booted outside. Should be a corner for Garvey. The corner or throw. It's pretty close to the corner flag. Not many patrons inside of the Stadium East Complex. If you're watching this live, you're close by. Come on down. Show your support. White goes by one. A shot by White into the defender's chest. The other skipper, that's Casanova, went outside for another corner. Two corners in succession for Garvey. Shot again. White again. Goes by one again. Going for the near post, though. a bit selfish from White. He had three persons inside of the penalty area, awaiting the cross, awaiting the pass. But instead, she went for goal at an acute angle. And from where she were, uh, was, didn't expect that not to go in. Coach Reeves of Central. Not looking concerned, though. Looking relaxed, although his team is under three. Goalkeeper Tate is standing over the possession. And they almost gave it away. They're showing confidence, but don't know if they have it. And that's the skipper Casanova for Central. Swings a play of field. Trying to go forward, but broken up by Taylor. Taylor playing the left back position. She overlaps sometimes. Thomas puts it alongside the penalty area. White goes away from one using her strength and skill. Puts it forward though, looking for the run or the speed of Cowan to latch on. Cowan with the possession, gets the bet of Casanova of Central. Top of the penalty area. Whoosh! A shot taken off the right boot of Williams. She danced around two defenders. Ball bounced nicely for her. She hit it wide off the left upright. Three nil is the scoreline. Two goals so far from White. One from Howard. Gav Maceo in cruise control. Not one attempt at Garvey goal just as yet. But here once again, White puts it forward now, top of the penalty area. Going by one. Goalkeeper to beat as she slots it wide. Not for the first time. Williams again getting two opportunities in the last minute and a half and failing to convert. That easily could have been 4 0 for Garvey. Brilliant ball again from the big Lady White. Finding Williams and failing to convert. Glancing off the right upright. Williams getting two glorious opportunities for Garvey. Phillips for Central gave, gave it away. Going forward again, the form of Howard turning beautifully is Howard inside a penalty era. Skips over one and puts it forward now in the side netting, and it will be Central's ball. Bit selfish again. We saw it from White earlier on. Now we're seeing it from Howard. And both have put their names on the score sheet. White with two, Howard with one. White read it well. But very good combination of passing from Central. Puts it forward in the defensive third of Garvey. Central trying to get their passing game up and up. Not happening at all for them. And they're giving, away, giving it away momentarily. 
picking up the play is the speedy Howard chips it from left to right which was all alone ahead of the defenders the captain Casanova of Central came out of the center back position attacking a short while ago now she takes her sweet time to call it the pass she comes back to a regular position launching one of field and here comes Garvey once again in the form of Howard beautiful move by Howard on the left normally I would say showing a bit of skill but that's more of a bit oh she dances again still in possession bit of a gallery football being set in by these two ladies Howard and Smith Smith has joined the party but to a, a loss that's what puts it forward offside called against Phillips will be a free kick to Garvey in their own half and that was not Phillips actually that was Shaw number two here comes White once again and that's her third easy does it the fourth for Garvey the third for White a minute 26 Garvey they lead by four goals to nil over Central this is a tip friendly society school girls football competition Stidham East seeing a flurry of goals in the first half Eats like Sunday morning went yeah, around defender Donaldson four, and she was not there four, and slotting pass goalkeeper Tate in the composure Did all around oozing with confidence the third one. goal of so White and Garvey's four. fourth. So that has certainly zapped the energy out of Central. Can they come back? That's a big question. You still have to ask a question once a game has been played. Bit of strength being shown, bit of power. And strength being shown by Hunt. She wears number five for Garvey. She's a strong young lady. She plays a bit aggressive at times. Nothing is wrong with that. And so far, we've seen four goals so far in this match. But Three coming from the boot of Dahlia White. Pick it to be taken by Central. Skipper Casanova will take the free kick. Swings it towards goal. And that's the first attempt. I'm going to call it an attempt though. It means they are across inside the penalty area. But I'm giving them one attempt at goal. I'm giving them that. In the meantime, the ball. Song downfield looking for Cowan. Cowan now playing on the right hand side. She started on the left, turning beautifully. It's Cowan. But she needs a partner in crime, but they have given it away right back to Garvey. And you see the players from Central, they're walking on the field. No, it is White. Chipping inside a penalty area, controlling beautifully Howard and slotting home. Her second of the match, the fifth for Garvey. That was easy as it can be. Going past the right hand of Tate at the near post. 5 0 Garvey over Central. It's Incentive Friendly Society School Girls Football Competition, the second for Julie and Howard. Minute 29. We expected it as it continues. See the replay controlled. Oh, that was easy. And it comes forward. In the meantime, Garvey pulls it back right to her left back. Smith, Smith turns away from one. Lays it still on the left hand side, controlling beautifully. There, Taylor. 
Taylor gets the ball back right. Turning Taylor. Laying it top of the penalty area. Rolls it wide or right. Inside the penalty area. Shot towards goal. Oh, goalkeeper Tate. A good effort trying to stop the shot. And that is the sixth goal for Garvey. And that came off the right boot of Cowan, who started on the left hand side, now operating on the right. She showed her speed, now she showed her power. Minute 30, Garvey leads by six goals to nil over Central as Issa Tip Friendly Society Schoolgirls Football Competition. Cowan just tying her shoelace. Let's keep it inside the penalty area. Goalkeeper Tate could not hold on. And we see the fourth official, Carvel Banton. We've got the board to say one minute of added time. At least one minute. So six nil. And the score line. So Garvey wanted to pile on the pressure, wanted to pile on the goals. When they get the opportunities like this against lower level teams, they try to make the best of it. Technical director Maren Gordon is on national duties. Head coach of the under 17 team who lost last evening to Guadalupe. By two goals to one. They were leading by one goal to nil going into the second half. And got a red card. In the meantime, once again, Garvey trying to go seven and slotting home beautifully. And again, I think that's Cowan. Yes, it is. Cowan's second goal, seventh for Garvey. Minute 32, or 30 plus two. Garvey sailing on a Wednesday afternoon over Central. It's a tip friendly society school girls football competition. It's a 7 0 hammering in the first half over Central. So, three goals for White, two for Cowan, and two for Howard. As he stripped the defender of the ball and slotted home to goalkeeper Tate's left. At the kickoff, though, at the kickoff, I think, though. First minute. That it will be the end of the first half. You look on referee Four. Stevenson. First and I think two. that's it. As that predicted, end of the first that's half. We witnessed seven goals three seven. from Dahlia White and two Second from Kiba Cowan and yeah. Julie and Howard. Last year's beaten finalist Garvin Maceo, the lead by seven goals to nil over Central in this Inserted Friendly Society Schoolgirls football competition. We'll be back for second half action.
Welcome back to Stadium East for the Assertive Friendly Society Schoolgirls Football Competition, the 2023 edition. I'm Sean Grant cruising through on this glorious Wednesday afternoon, getting ready for the second half. Gav Maceo up against Central. Last year's been finalist Gavi up against Central, who, when they went to the furthest they've won in this competition, is quarterfinals. I think that was done back in 2018 or 2019, 2018, I think. And they're going to be making two changes, Central. And Garvey, who were a dangerous team last year, um, continuing on the same path, especially a three-timer from Dahlia White so far in this matchup. 7-0 is a scoreline. The central players going back on the field. Two players standing beside the fourth official, Carvel Banton. I think, though, a change will be made. Number three. And we're coming in. And that's uh, Dejane Brown. For Central. So, Buddha, Alia Buddha, number 14, is out. And Dejane Brown, number 3, is in. This here on your screen. Buddha was playing center back alongside Casanova, the captain who wears number 10. It was not working out for them at all. They could not get the ball out of their defensive third where they needed to. And trailing by seven goals to nil, Coach Reeves does not want to see the floods game open any further. But Garvey to start off proceedings in the second half. Substitution They're for also the Central High team of the number 14, Alia Buda. She's replaced and number three, Watson. Dejane Brown. Number 12, who started in the second half, was missing in action somewhat. I think the ball was being played around her. Howard Watson, Barton, White, all had possession. Did not see much of her in that first half. Amelia Watson, we're in number 12 for Garvey. They want to go one better, though, in this competition. We started back in 1998. Two years it wasn't played, though. Started in 2020 and was not completed because of COVID. And there was no competition back in 2021. Ball swung beautifully downfield. Garvey on the attack once again. Going forward. And a shot which trickles along, coming off the left boot of Casanova, should be a corner. And that was from Hunt. That shot was like a leaking faucet, though, that's trickled along the turf. But it is a corner for Garvey with a seven goal lead, a seven goal cushion over Central. So they had been to the quarterfinals and they've lost all members of that team. That was back in 2019 when they went to the quarterfinals. So it's a rebuilding for Central inside of the penalty area. And it goes outside for another corner. The two corners in succession for Garvey. The young lady who just came on, Brown, failure to clear. In fact, Instead of kicking the ball forward, it went behind. I have to ask the question if she is better than Buddha, who she replaced. Ball swung across the face of goal. Inside a penalty area, trying to turn, surrounded by three players. Again, Garvey in possession, showing the composure through Williams. Holds it back alongside the center circle. And they've given the possession away well, momentarily. One back by White. White goes by one. So did by two players, White. A wily individual, a strong individual. Has three goals so far in this fixture. Beautiful pass from White. Shot towards goal or into the goalkeeper, Tate's grasp. That was it hard, but right to goalkeeper, Tate. Held on on the second attempt.
in 7 0 in favor of Garvey. As the ball turned into touch, we have throw to Garvey. It's a ferocious strike, though, by Cowan searching for a third goal. But right to Central State. Once again, no look pass inside the penalty area. This should be the eighth, but offside, seen by the first assistant, Otti. There you see her on your screen. It will be a free kick to Central inside their penalty area. Goalkeeper Tate is down. She's in a bit of pain, though. The medical team, short time, is here. The doc is here from short time. Let's check in her right wrist. Two shots were belted towards her. Doesn't look good. Present time. It doesn't look good. And the signal has been made by the doc that a change is to be made. And do they have a reserve goalkeeper? That's the big question. Coach Reeves of Central has a big decision to make. Will be putting goal. But Tate still flashing her right wrist. She will be substituted. But who will go in goal? As she's in tears. In helps out the field. Still don't see any movement on the bench. Oh. I will see someone trying the gloves. Tell you who it is in a very short while. Looks like Gordon. Gordon will be is trying the gloves. So she has to change the top. So Gordon, who is one of their strikers, will be now a goalkeeper. So forced change for Central. They made one substitution at the start of the second half putting on Dejane Brown replacing Alia Buddha but now a forced change after goalkeeper Tate went down so a new player in that's Leticia Davis number 12 for Central. And Tate out. So Gordon has gone between the two sticks. 36 minutes substitution for the Central High team. Injured goalkeeper. So there you see her on your screen, the gloves being forced on her hand. If you look at Tate though, Tate is a little bit wiry, a little thing, so maybe the gloves fits her hand perfectly, but you have to force it on Gordon's hands. Getting some instructions from her coach Reeves. And Gordon now will be standing between the two sticks for Central. Central's Da Costa Cup team advanced to the final for the first time last season. And seeing that, they think that they can do it also. Because Central defied the odds in the Da Costa Cup. Oh my word. Well, at least the ball is outside the penalty area. It's the biggest thing. Turning beautifully, leaving two defenders behind is Williams. So Garb Maceo back in control. Give and go. Beautifully done. Top of the penalty area. Now inside the penalty area. A very good tackle. Stopping the attack. This from Garvey. And 
Ball to it into touch. Will be the throw of Garvey. Not light by Centrals. As you saw the doctor making the sign to the bench of Central to say that we need a change. And there you'll see Gordon just putting on the gloves. Starting in the attacking role. Now she is in the goal for her team. Goalkeeper coming outside the penalty area. Cool and easy, you may say. Not hurriedly. Garvey puts the play forward once again now in the form of Cowan. Cowan chips the play, top of the penalty area. Another ball to go into the path of Howard. And Howard, instead of taking a ferocious shot, tried to chip it. I think it went off the body of Casanova outside for a corner. So it will be another corner to the way of Garvey Maceo. Leads by seven goals to nil. They got into a gear, a vibe, as what you want to call it, in that first half, unleashing seven goals. So far in the second half, they've held on to the handbrake. And they've given it away. Losing concentration, though, Garvey. Handing central a throw. L lack of communication between the players in the attacking third. They're looking at Williams. Who's yet to put her name on the score sheet. She has seen Cowan score two. Howard score two. And White score three. A throw to Central. Looking a bit disarray. And maybe she just never realized what's yellow from brown. Threw it right to Garvey. Turning beautiful Williams. Using her skill. Dancing. Puts inside. Want to give and go. Back this to Williams. Inside the penalty area. Outside the penalty area, I should say. Referee says to continue playing. Continue action. Shielding the possession. A shot taken. And that's the eighth goal. The eighth goal coming from the right boot of Hunt, Shanae Hunt, of Garvey. Her first goal of the matchup. And there you see the dance. That is the celebration dance of Hunt. As they lead now by eight goals to nil. In minute 56. I see shielding, shielding the captain Casanova. And slotting home past goalkeeper Gordon, the new goalkeeper. Number five, Shane Hunt scoring there for half of the field. So, another goal. First. So, it's now half of the field. Eight, Central High. Yeah. So, play continues. Here, once again, White lays on the possession inside. Across the face of goal, it slots in. The third goal coming from Cowan, all on the ground. Her left boot at an acute angle. And Cowan getting her third goal. You see White in your picture with Cowan jogging beside her. Minute 57 for Cowan. The ninth goal. So White has laid it off to Cowan. The left boot slotted home pass. Goalkeeper Gordon. 9 0. Garvey, their lead over Central. It's a tip friendly society. Schoolgirls football competition on with a bang in this Clarendon derby. Wanna swing forward. Third goal for Kiva Cohen. Coming in the 42nd minute. Garvey Maceo's so in, in the meantime, play continues. Down. Garvey on the attack once Garvey again. Maceo, Wanted to reach double figures. High Howard field. in possession. Puts the ball Lever, top of the Cohen, penalty area. Rolling Cohen. is white. Going in by one is white. Turning beautifully, but dispossessed. 
9 0 is the scoreline for Gavi over Central. Gavi in possession, turning. But seemed like Central there, they basically gave up the movement by Phyllis, or Phillips, pardon me, in number seven of Central. She was all over the place and got tired at the end. She's having a word with her coach, Reeves, while floating inside the penalty area. Failure to clear, and that's the 10th goal. That is the 10th goal, and that looks like Cowan again. Yes, it is Cowan. That's her fourth of the matchup. So four goals for Cowan, two Cowan. for Howard, three for White, and one for Hunt. In the 44th minute. So there's a slight correction we're going to make here on the screen. 30 minutes a half. Not 45. So a change will be made. This for the central unit. Number 8 will be coming in. Phillips will be going out. Phillips who made the dribble earlier on and looked exhausted after. Daniel Rowe will be brought in. So 10-0 is a scoreline. In this matchup. I have to say a special good afternoon to Johan Scott. And all of the viewers around the world, in Australia, Guatemala, USA, it is 10-0 in favor of Garvey. Well, now put in the right boot of Howard. Brilliant movement that's been displayed by Williams. Williams inside the penalty area towards goal. Williams lines up, rolls it, coming off the boot or the foot of Gordon. He's in the goalkeeper gear. And if you have just joined us, though, the original goalkeeper, Tate, was injured with her right wrist. And the striker, Gordon, had to go in goal for Central. It was 7-0 at half time. Three goals have scored so far in the second half. Inside their defensive third. Robert forward, Garvey trying to build. Build, they're doing Cowan all alone on the left-hand side, trying to no-look pass. You want it back, but given to no one in a yellow vest. Skipper Casanova clears for Central. That was a good pass from Casanova, but taken away momentarily. The Central giving it right back to Garvey. Howard puts it forward wider right for Howard, picks it up and inside the penalty area. And a shot towards him over the crossbar. That was Taylor, not Howard, pardon me. Overlapping. And she is a defender for Garvey. Overlapping, coming inside the penalty area, skying over the crossbar. A goal kick to Central. Central high. 10 0 is the scoreline in this second half. They made the adjustments. Lacey Phillips, number 17, Rhea Samuel, and number 11, Chanel Thomas, being replaced by the Rule. So just looking on, and a replacement. The substitutions will be happening for Central. And going in, looks to be Shante Coley in number 15. Latoya Shaw, number two, is replaced by number 15, Shate Coley. So Coley in, and Latoya Shaw Substitution is out. So Central playing around with the possession inside the penalty area. Goal key, I mean, referee Stevenson had to call it back. Maybe.
she was awaiting or telling them to wait on the whistle. Central's ball, though, they trail by 10 goals to nil in this fixture. Garvey back in control inside their own half. Now in the half of Central on the left. Moving well. Chipping inside, top of the penalty area. Turning beautifully, Taylor. Going round one. She wants to put her name on the score sheet. Well, swung inside the penalty area. Swing and a miss from the right boot of Williams. But still, White lines up, takes a shot. It's blocked and bounces over the goal line. And it's a corner, another corner to Garvey. So says referee Stevenson. Central looking a little bit lethargic, though. Unfit. But they're still playing, although down 10-0. The corner will be now taken from the left by Leah Williams of Garvey. They're searching for more goals though. Four from Cowan, three from White, one from Hunt and two from Howard. Garvey on the attack once again, in the possession outside of Penance area looking for White. Swift on the possession, however, they've won it back. Almost gave it away. Chamberlain. Almost ran over by White. She's still on the ground, Chamberlain. She be helped up by the referee. She was run over by White. Wow, steamrolled. She's up. So she's okay. She's ready to play once again. Corey Stevenson with us. Drop the ball at the Central's player. Boot. They've given it away easily. Here comes Garvey once again. Through Williams. Now into the center circle, Taylor. Puts it on the right flank. Turning around, using a burst of speed is Howard. It had to be used in both to win back that possession. Chested down beautifully by Taylor. Again, she looks for the number 11. Beautifully done by Howard. Cuts inside. Howard now, alongside the penalty area. Still Howard. Thought he went over the goal line. Yes, it did. So says the first assistant, Otti. It will be a goal kick for Central as they trail by 10 goals to nil in this Issa Friendly Society schoolgirls football competition. Four timer from Cowan, three from White, two from Howard, one from Hunt. But still, Garvey must sail on the hunt for more goals. The skipper for Central, Casanova. Says she asked goalkeeper Gordon. Just pass the ball to me. That's what Casanova is saying. She drifts off, wanting the ball. And guess what she wants? She goes by one. She has some skill though, but she gave it away. In the meantime, Trying to build the ball back inside the penalty area of uh, Central. And a goal kick. They trail by 10. A little sloppy there from goalkeeper Gordon. Again looking for Casanova. Again Casanova inside the penalty area. One time effort outside. But right back to Gav Maceo. Was stripped of the possession, but won back by Taylor. Inside the center circle, floated to the right. No look. Wider right. Being shot from behind is Howard. Howard surrounded by two players. Dispossessed, however, she has not allowed the play to leave her. 
Howard again. On touch inside, a back heel by White to no one. Now easy control, turn and shoot. Garvey's Williams. Lays out the possession to White. Cowan inside the penalty area. Lays it up looking forward. One touch inside. And no one can get a shot on it though. Taylor was hovering over the possession but failed to take a shot towards goal. Another corner to Garvey as they lead by 10 goals to nil in second half action. Initiative Friendly Society Schoolgirls Football Competition. Let me ask what does tip means. Ball swung inside the penalty area, cleared. Going over the goal line for another corner. Two corners in succession for Garvey. Smith with the corner, rolling it this time. Turning beautifully is wide. Swing the ball inside the penalty area. A shot taken off the right boot of Cowan. Launches that like a NASA aircraft that was not towards the goal at all. Poor effort in the end from Cowan, who has scored not one, not two, not three, but four goals so far in this matchup. Fifty-four minutes on the clock. Again, we see goalkeeper Gordon finding her skipper, Casanova. And almost taken away. Foul committed. This by Cowan. Wanted to steal the ball from Casanova and slot home for her fifth goal. However, it has gone the other way. Free kick to Central in the second half. Turning beautifully. Lays the position to White. White between two defenders. Top of the penalty area. A shot and goes in. Brilliantly done of the outside of the right boot. We asked, as we said before, she has not had her name on the score sheet. Leah Williams putting her name on the score sheet for the first time in this matchup, increasing the lead of Garvey over Central as they now lead by 11 goals to nil. And the first goal from Leah Williams. It's a tip friendly society school girls football competition. A flurry of goals on the opening day. Turning beautifully was Cowan finding White, laying it off, controlling and taking the shot. Williams, the outside for right boot, spinning away from goalkeeper Gordon. 11 0 Garvey they lead over Central. Chain is ringing out. 15 and 17 coming in. Or is that 16? So Morgan is in. Hunt is out. And 19, Barn is out. In is Davina Foster. She wears the number 16 jersey. And Shanique Morgan, the number 17 jersey. There is he. Foster, number 16. Running on without any shin guards, though. Fourth official, Gabriel Banton. Four. Gabriel Masio coming in the 56th minute. Number seven, Leo Williams. The score. Also substitution for Gabriel Masio. So, Central, they've gotten a goal. Central, a mix-up in the defense. And Central, they've gotten a goal. They pulled one back. What a major surprise. I called a shot in the first half, or more so across. And the captain, Casanova, is ecstatic. She has played her heart out for Central. Casanova, ball coming in the 58th minute. Well, Casanova. Pulling one back for Garvey. Wow. wow. In audacious effort. And it goes in. A substitution 
So the half was one back, and if anyone to score for Central, should be Casanova. She has done everything. So not a clean sheet for Garvey this afternoon. They just made two changes. And the two changes they made had to take off, come off the field to put on the shin guards, and play resumed. Then a fire happening for Central, but put inside the penalty area, the goal scorer, the captain, Casanova, standing strong. But tossing for the possession, Cohen of Gar Maceo. She gets a bitter end of the stick. However, Garvey, they've gotten it right back. She will play forward, controlling beautifully. Possession, Taylor. Top of the penalty area. Let's give number one challenge. And a shot towards goal. That easy as you does it. Slotting home was Williams getting her second goal of this matchup. She was not on the score sheet in the first half. Now putting two goals in the second half, increasing the lead of Garb Marcel as they lead by 12 goals to one over Central. Minute 59. Sir Williams collecting the ball inside the penalty area. First touch, exquisite. The second, slotting pass, goalkeeper Gordon. Yes, so, another change. So, Morgan coming on. And Chamberlain going out. The fifth substitution for Central. As I guess they want to give all the bench some time on the field. Scored by number seven, Leo Williams. So Leo Williams with two goals in this matchup. Defender Smith in possession. Gets it back from his or her defensive third. A slip up there by Taylor. White is building. Back to White. At least one minute of time to be added on to close out this fixer. So Garvey just playing around the matchup. Not allowing Central to get a touch off the ball. Chipped forward on the right. Again, we see the skill of Howard. Now finding Taylor back to Howard inside the penalty area on the right. Across the face of goal, can't control, cleared by the defense of Central. Or the head of Morgan who just came on the park. Wanting a given goal was White. But taken away by Central. However, one back by White. Central midfielder loves to be around wherever the ball is. And that signals the end of the matchup. Last year's beaten finalist, Garvey Maceo, steamrolling Central, winning by one. 12 goes to one in this fixture. And the final whistle coming from referee Yvette Stevenson. Four goals from Cohen, three goals from White, two goals from Williams, two goals from Howard. And one from Hunt. Wow. Those were the goal scorers in this matchup. We see the two coaches shaking hand. Hebert of Garvey and Reeves of Central having a word with each other after the game. And the three officials of Stevenson, Otti, and Richards marching off the field, signaling the end of this matchup. Garvey, they won by 12 goals to one. Goal scorers again. Cowan scoring four goals on the day. Two from Howard, Julian Howard, with two goals. Two from Leah Williams, three from Delia White, and one from Shanae Hunt. 12 goals on the cards, and you'll see we play the goals on the day. And there you see White to the first goal. That was a bomber on the day. And the goals kept coming right after. White skipping over the fence and slotting home. 
a striking home of a goalkeeper, Tate, who had to be substituted in the second half. 12 1 is the scoreline for Garvey over Central. It's a yeah, tip friendly yeah. society schoolgirls football competition. However, we are not done just yet. As you look back on the highlights, we're not done just yet. The second game between the defending champions, Excelsior, and a special team, you may call it, Bridgeport, faces off. And expectations are high for Excelsior as they've only really lost one player from last year. Can they continue the massacre they've been handing from 2017? Time will tell. We get ready for the second game coming up.
president of the Intersecondary School Sports Association. And now, from our sponsor, Big Friendly Society, Mr. Winston South, the CEO.
for the coming match. We look at the starting lineup for the Bridgeport team. We will start with Jada Mitchell, number one. Jasmine Ariana Powell, number 13. Anasia Lawrence, number 14. Levi Kirkland, number 15. And Dachinel Smith. Number 17. Start the line up there for the Richwood team. After watching the first of two games where Gav Maceo last year has been finalist, demolishing Central by 12 goals to 1, it's now time for the feature fixture featuring the defending champions. The team they call Excelsior High going up against Bridgeport is what promises to be another goal fest. On which side, we don't know. With Excelsior girls in gold and green coming out looking pretty confident. I was the president of ISA in the house. Mr. Keith Wellington also there. He's the CEO of uh, Tip Friendly Society. Mr. Wilton South in the mix also. A representative of Jamaica Football Federation is on the sideline. Thought she was going to be there though. Mr. Sm South of Tip Friendly is the CEO. But the party welcomed and led by the president of the Intersecondary School Sports Association. Keith Wellington. And right behind him is a good friend of mine representing Denise Jalal, who runs the girls' competition, but Jalal is absent. She is a principal of Denby High in Clarendon. The officials on hand for this fixture. Marissa Golson, Keone Denton is the first assistant. Stefan Duar is the fourth. To the Bridgeport team in red and white. Number 10, the captain, Bridgeport. As Joe Hagen. A diminutive attacking player. But Excelsior goes into this game as the favorite. The president of ISA, Mr. Morris. This fixture. The principal of Fogarus. Wilton South, the CEO of Tech. After one game play, and the second match. Jared Smith, this is Jared Smith, the marketing will be manager on the cards. Also of Tip Freddy So if you just hear, ladies and gentlemen, to the Smith of Tip Freddy Society. Of the national anthem. So the national anthem will now be played.
it's the second game of two the Issa Tip Friendly Society School Girls Football Competition. The defending champions Excelsior up against Bridgeport. The officials on hand, we stated before, led by referee Larissa Goldson. She is the woman in the middle. Has been around for a very long time. She's from St. Catherine. As you see, the ladies from Excelsior give the starting 11. We have Goodall in goal. Tonot number four. McNutt five. Cassandra Smith nine. Shakira Richards 16. Akilia Johnson six. Savantai Price seven. Seaton wearing the number eight. Jersey Buckley number 10. And Powell 11. Mount Francis number 12. I have to tell you about Powell though. She has played national under 15 and under 17. Why Buckley has also played under 17. But Buckley now takes over the role of David Richards. David Richards, the missing factor for Excelsior team. She scored over 31 goals last season for Excelsior. She has gone on, taken up a scholarship. But Buckley has taken over that scoring role because she's a leading goal scorer in the women's league. She's a youngster. She wears a number 10. So she can belt them, she can score. But although missing the component of Richards, who led the attack for Excelsior last season, they do have Buckley to make up. She was around last season also. But Buckley has taken full control. Akilia Johnson plays a midfield. We're in the number six for Excelsior, a national honor 17 representative. So to Daniel Mignot in number five in defense for this team. For Bridgeport, have Jaden Mitchell in goal. Jasmine Thompson, number three. Janique Kirkland, 15. Ariana Powell, 13. Anastasia Lawrence, the number 14. Jersey. Chevalier Manley, 7. Maria Heslop, number 8. Jada Tyson, wearing the number 9 jersey. We have Jamoya, Joe Hagen, number 10. She's a captain. Diminutive and wily. Skilled player. Mikhail Johnson, or Jackson, pardon me, 5. And Dashanel Smith, number 17, Jersey, their striker on the day. Two captains, you see, number 10, Buckley for Excelsior. Diminutive is Buckley, so too. Joe Hagen for Bridgeport. But Buckley, certainly, a lot of experience under her belt playing in the women's competition, playing on the national youth teams. She is the experienced campaigner for the Excelsior unit. The head coach of the Excelsior team, not in the island, Xavier Gilbert, with the national senior team in Australia, playing the Cup of Nations with Australia, the Czech Republic, and Spain. So the Jamaica senior team will play Spain tomorrow in the Cup of Nations in Australia. Two days later, they play the Czech Republic, and two days after that, they play the home side, Australia. I know that Xavier Gilbert is probably watching the stream in Australia and others. Let's see how he has prepared this bunch. They have won it continuously from 2017 though, Excelsior. They won it 10 times in the past overall from it started 25 years ago. In fact, from 2017, they won it 2018 yeah, and 2019. The three years on the trot, Arthur Lennon had won it in 2016, and then after that, 2020, the competition started and had to be stopped because of COVID, and then the following year, there was no competition back in 2021, and at that time, Garvey Maceo thought they would have won it. Then 2022, Garvey and Excelsior met in the final. Excelsior won it four years on the trot. Now looking for five this year. The big question is, can they do it? But first and foremost, they have to do it one game at a time, starting with their first on this glorious Wednesday. Excelsior building. In the half of Bridgeport, though. He spoke about this special lady, Buckley. Puts it forward on the right. Oh, is that the play? Price swings it inside the penalty area and a header. That's the first goal. The first goal, Excelsior opening the scoring in the first minute of action. 
as they lead by one goal to nil over Bridgeport in the Steve Friendly Society Schoolgirls Football Competition. We told you before, it's going to be a goal feast. That's the expectations. I may be wrong, but a good cross from Price. And headed home. But at the only goal coming uh, in, he so, so the first minute of action, producing the first goal. Right, and I will tell you who the goal scorer is in a very short while. In the meantime, they're trying to build. Price gives away the possession. I'm trying to win it back from Bridgeport. The skipper's giving it away. Powell, telling our old player to go forward. Ball floated inside the penalty area, controlling top of the penalty area. Second shot and hits the right upright. And the peeling for handball. It's a tiny Seaton. Number eight. What's the goal scorer? Plays on the left hand side. A wily player though. She can dribble. She can pass. So one nil Excelsior they lead over Bridgeport. Shot towards goal. That's a second goal. What a strike that was. I'm outside the penalty area of the right boot of Smith. Striking home. Cassandra Smith doubling the advantage in the third minute of action. Excels on their lead by two goals to nil. Cassandra Smith in the defensive aspect. Controlling beautifully. Sizing up. Hitting hard Second in the back of the net. The third minute, number nine, Cassandra Smith. It's Excelsior 2. So in the meantime, Excelsior going yeah. forward. No over dribbling is Price. Dispossessed, not for the first time in this game. Winning the possession. Jackson of uh, Bridgeport gave it away. Beautiful move, not one, not twice. Powell going forward. Double dribbling once again. Not an national in this Excelsior team. I know about four or five. Powell, Buckley, Seaton, Johnson, and Mignot. It's a very confident bunch. This unit from Mountain View, the Eagles. It's a widely known. Want to put on the left hand side. Beautifully done once again. Going forward now inside the penalty area. Scooped up inside the penalty area. And slotting but can't beat the custodian Mitchell of Bridgeport. That should easily have been 3-0 for Excelsior. France is getting a glorious opportunity for Excelsior. Francis wants to steal. Using her power. Wins the ball back for Excelsior. Oh, beautiful move inside the penalty area. Going by two. Did I count? And then chipping, but right to goalkeeper Mitchell at the near post. Bridgeport again giving it right back to the Eagles. Excelsior. Going forward inside the penalty area. They lead by two goals to nil. And uh, oh, by the goalkeeper. Hits a left upright. And cleared by the defense off a Bridgeport was giving it right back to Excelsior moving past one price cleared from Bridgeport but not too far color red as you may call them Bridgeport unit Excelsior back in possession on the right hand side drifting wider right Ball swung inside, the penalty area, and that's the third goal. Brilliantly done. The cross coming in from Buckley. And finding Seaton once again, her second of the matchup. But what a play by Buckley down the right channel. Swinging the ball across, inside of the right boot. And finding the eight Seaton, scoring her second goal. 
and certainly putting Excelsior, the Eagles, soaring in this matchup. They lead by three goals to nil. Third goal coming in the sixth minute. Number eight, Tiny Seaton. Excelsior, three, Bridgeport. Yeah. So Bridgeport under pressure already in this matchup. Referee, Golson. Looks on. As Bridgeport seems like they have knocked the wind out of them for the first six minutes of action. The defending champions cruising along on this Wednesday. Bridgeport does not look compact or full of composure. Cleared by Bridgeport inside the center circle. Excelsior once again on the attack. Going by one inside the penalty area. Trying to unleash Francis. And then a shot taken by Francis, the goalkeeper. Mitchell diving to her right. Blocked off the line. And again, Francis takes a shot. And it's cleared off the line. Will be a corner to Excelsior. Francis on her weak left foot. Or left side using the right boot. The slotting pass goalkeeper Mitchell was not successful on her first attempt and was not successful on her second. 3 0 is a scoreline, two goals from Seaton so far, and the other a bomber from Smith. Skipper Buckley takes the corner inside the penalty area, one time effort. Francis can't get a hold on that. I'll get on to that. Turning inside the penalty area across the face of goal. Francis controls and block once again. Price puts it to her captain, Buckley. Buckley goes by one across the face of goal. Header and it went wide off the left upright. I thought it had gone in. A clear header from Shantai. Price, she holds her head. She knew she got a clear opportunity for Excelsior. A goal kick to Bridgeport. Excelsior, the defending champions, leading by three goals to nil. In the early game, though, if you just joined our broadcast, it was a goal feast for last year's beaten finalist, Dav Marcel, getting by Central by 12 goals to one. Once again inside the penalty area, holding up before the ball went across the goal line. Francis controlling, but can't unleash a shot. Now the shot comes, it's blocked. And another shot comes, it's blocked. That was Francis with that attempt. But a skill being shown by Seaton. It's cleared by Bridgeport, but not too far. Well put now on the right hand side in Price's path. Now finding Buckley. Buckley goes by one and a shot which is blocked. Bridgeport under siege. Cleared. Of the price who launches that wide and a goal kick for Bridgeport, and she apologizes to her teammates, Shyla Francis. 3 0, the defending champions, exhausted their lead. If you missed the first game, though, it was 12 1 in favor of last year's beaten finalist. Or last year's beaten finalist, Gav Marcel. Four goals from Kiba Cowan. Three from White. As you look back on that play, brilliantly done from Seaton. Here once again, Francis using her strength. Here's all the possession. Ball swung across the face of goal. No one there to latch on. Finding Seaton lays it up. Top of the penalty area. They took Powell. And that went wide and high. A goal kick to Bridgeport. So Kiba Cohen scored four goals for Garve Marseille in that first game Dale White three goals also with two goals was Julianne Howard also with two goals was Leela Williams and then one from Hunt once again Price Buckley Buckley wants it back she gets it back chips inside the penalty area through the legs of Price was cleared only momentarily a shot towards goal. Goalkeeper diving and saving. And another shot which is blocked. It's 
So, shots raining inside of Stadium East. Bridgeport has to call the police very soon. In the meantime, chipping is Buckley. Brilliant by the captain. Chipping over the outstretched arm of goalkeeper Mitchell. The would excelsior by four goals to nil. In minute 11, the leading goal scorer in the women's league in the island, Sathony Buckley, showing her skill and her precision. That was done beautifully. Buckley with the fourth goal for excelsior and her first in the match. Buckley. Scoring in the 11th minute, it's now Excelsior 4. So 4-0 is the scoreline, the Issa yeah. Tip Friendly Society School Girls Football Competition. So you look on Buckley, she's a dangerous individual. And she seems shy. Francis for Excelsior. Loves to play forward to no one in a yellow vest. Failure to clear a bridge board top of their penalty area and still inside their penalty area. Uh, they almost boot outside for a corner. They've given it away right to Powell. Pulls it back inside the penalty area. Shot taken across the face of goal that went wide of the right upright. Pretty close though. Still a goal kick as Buckley there was going to the far post. So skipper Buckley. Having a word with her players. Still a 4 0 scoreline. Still first half action. Still it's a tip friendly society school girls football competition. Price. Top of the penalty area. And a shot taken over the crossbar of the right boot of Powell. Had goalkeeper Mitchell at her mercy. And she boot the ball over the crossbar. Defender Powell for Bridgeport in the number 13 jersey. They look on Buckley, number 10. She gets her players all involved though. She's a maestro on the ball. And not only passing and being creative, she also comes back and tackles. Excelsior's throw. With a 4 0 lead in this first half. Denton, Tony Denton is the first assistant. Richards with the throw. Thought of going the back heel route was Powell. Powell going between two players and goes forward for Excelsior. Through the top of the penalty area, lays it off. Left with a drive, and that's the fifth goal of the left boot of Akilia Johnson for Excelsior. 5 0 in minute 14. Excels of their lead over Bridgeport. Akilia Johnson, where the number six, Bridgeport, is on the fire. Need my five goals to nil. I said before, though, that this team is an exceptional one. I've seen them rolling on since the last one back in 2016. They have continuously won this Roll competition. Roll for Keila Johnson in the 14th minute with Excelsior. It's a final scoreline wow. over Bridgeport. Here once again Excelsior trying to go forward. Right go momentarily there. as won by Price. Turns away, she's brought down, no whistle on the play. Brilliant move being made by Powell. Goes on the left hand side, finding Seaton. Rosie, top of the penalty area, turning, and a shot towards goal, and another goal off the right boot of Destiny Powell. The sixth goal for Excelsior, the first for Destiny Powell, and the Excel Excelsior train roll and keeps on rolling in the first half. Six till their lead is a tip friendly society school girls football competition over Bridgeport. So Paul is slotting home pass goalkeeper Mitchell. Destiny Paul number 11. 
Not sure it's on. In the 60th minute, it's so now so. Celsius 6. Bridge 4. Cruising on this yeah. Wednesday afternoon. You know, smiles, the players. They saw Gav Maceo hand central, a 12 1 beating. And what they're trying to do here this afternoon. In the meantime, the skipper, skipper goes by one that is none other than Buckley. Across the face of goal, inside the penalty area, on the right boot, a shot taken is blocked off the line. Francis now lays out the possession. It's stripped off Francis, but still excels that they've won it back and given it right back to Bridgeport. Poor pass in the end, coming from Powell. Was looking for Seaton. But could not find her. It was two yards away. So, have to big up everyone who's watching across the globe. Thank you very much for joining our broadcast. Francis controls between two defenders. We're looking at give and go with Seaton. That was hit too hard from Francis. But Bridgeport had given the possession away. Once again, here comes Excelsior. A bit of wireless skill by Powell, who has scored one goal so far. Seaton swings the play, top of the penalty area. Most awkward, but cleared by the defence. And it will be Bridgeport's ball. Six nil is the scoreline. It's a trouncing here from the Excelsior unit. So far, it was 7 0 in favor of Garvey in the first half. In the meantime, Buckley goes by one, goes by two. Could you count along with me? Well, that was not the case. She did not go to three or four. And we see Excelsior's goalkeeper, Goodhall. Maybe for the first time in this matchup. It's a minute 18. Tackling and tussling for the possession. Let's go score Smith. She can hit them, Smith. So still it's a 6 0 scoreline. You'll see Mr. Wolf. He's the coach of Bridgeport. In on the meantime, here comes the skipper. They call her Buckley. Buckley goes by one. Buckley with the goalkeeper to beat. And Buckley failing to do that. Brilliant save by Mitchell. But she had goalkeeper Mitchell at her mercy. And she played around. She could have easily slotted home. But she did not. Powell. Mike Celsius, top of the penalty area. And saw the penalty area cleared by not clear just yet, but straight of the possession. Bridgeport they have the ball playing around inside the penalty area. Now the clearance comes, but not too far, only to find Smith. Six nil is a score line, and now inside the penalty area, and a shot which is wide of the left upright. This by the skipper Buckley. It's a goal kick to Bridgeport. Another opportunity went a begging. As you saw that Buckley getting a glorious opportunity. Could have slotted to the left or the right. But instead she slot to the left boot of goalkeeper Mitchell. Bridgeport. Give away the possession once again. Gives it away. Seaton. Roll to the top of the penalty area. Inside. A shot taken. A right to goal. Keeper Mitchell at the near post. Excelsior living in the half of Bridgeport. Seem like they'll build a tenement yard inside of the half of Bridgeport. They're not coming out at all. 
Beautiful ball on the right-hand side. Looking for the skipper who goes by one sweetly. Buckley inside the penalty area. Trying to pull it back. But she has won it back for Excelsior. Skipper on her right boot. She can belt them from there. And slots to the left. And went wide off the left upright. Too much confidence oozing from the skipper. Leaning by six goes to nil. And Celsius looking at the skipper Buckley that's sitting down though. And medical team running on the field for the Bridgeport player. As we saw one player in the first game being taken off, the goalkeeper. In the second half. Hopefully she's okay though. Referee Narissa Goldson standing over her. Narissa Goldson with a FIFA badge. Received an updated FIFA badge at least a few weeks ago. Management team for Bridgeport trying to calm down the players. Not looking too happy at all is uh, National Smith, number 17 of Bridgeport. And the young lady looks. I don't know what happened to her though. That's Heslop. And assisted off the field by the medical team and also the coach. Patrin. His name is Patrin Wop. W A U C H O P E. So I thought the first name was a little bit different. Then I heard the second. And I've seen the second name before, but not necessarily in Jamaica. So you're not missing any action whatsoever. Scoreline stands. 6 0 in favor of Excelsior. First game ended at 12 1 in favor of last year's beaten finalist, Garvey Maceo. It was central. There's some delay of game happening here. The player was taken off. So I'm just looking on. The player has been attended to off the field. A little confused what's happening here. So the goalkeeper had to go for the ball, but they realized they had to go for the ball. If they are going to continue playing. Bridgeport's Mitchell. If you look to the right at the top of the six yard. There is a pile of dirt that needs to be stomped down. Instead of east ground. Bridgeport in possession. Trying to turn though was Manley. Manley still in possession for Bridgeport. But her pass was blocked. Excelsior back in possession. Buckley laying it off to Powell. Back in her own half. Tolo. Richards back midway her own half. The Bridgeport players coming out. Tackling for the possession in the meantime. No look pass from Buckley inside of the penalty area. The right boot of Price. And Price is tackled. Is it a penalty? So referee Golson points to the spot as we see Price standing on the ground. So it's a penalty for Excelsior. 
after that tackle on Price. Tolo stands over the possession. She wants to take it. Will she take it? She walks away. So who's going to take it? It's going to be Price to take it. She was fouled inside the penalty area. Wanting to increase Excelsior's lead over Bridgeport. Score stands at 6 0 in the first half as it winds down. Price runs up and slots to the right of the almost diving Mitchell of Bridgeport. It's a 7 0 scoreline for Excelsior over Bridgeport. Shantai Price, a minute 27, has increased Excelsior's lead. The defending champions cruising in this first half. Not the greatest penalty though. What did Ball the job? Number seven coming in the 27th minute. Did the Got job. The number seven. It's a Bridgeport. The the seems like all has lost. So it's now Bridgeport High. Bridgeport High will start our yeah. proceedings. Still in first half action though. Jackson, we're the number five there. See the assistant coach, Everett Campbell. For Excelsior, standing in the head honcho post because of Xavier Gilbert doing national duties. In the meantime, here comes Excelsior once again on the right. And poor effort in the end from Buckley. And the reason why I say that though. Because when she went around the player, she was jogging for the ball, which was then sprinting. When she realized the ball was going outside, at that time she sprinted. Buckley once again going around the defender ever so sweetly with goalkeeper to beat. And she does just that, beating goalkeeper Mitchell to her left. It's Buckley's second, a minute 28, and Excelsior's eight. Eight nil, the lead over Bridgeport. It's, it's a tip friend, it's a society schoolgirls football competition. This is the opening day. What a plethora of goals we are seeing today. We saw 30 Number goals 10. in the first Daniel game, Buckley. and Four so far, in, the minute. in this it's matchup, eight goals eight. from yeah. one team, the defending champions. This is a whopper of a performance from Excelsior. They're going so far, still in us outside the penalty area, laying the possession off. Goal scorer, Smith. Seaton. And the pass the ball around. And let everyone to feel the leather. Oh, almost going through the goalkeeper. It's an almost goalkeeper. Oh, he scored. Oh, my word. Can you believe it? The ball turned back. I said they wanted everyone to get a touch off the leather. Goalkeeper Goodhall, not so good at all. Back pass between goalkeeper's legs. And when she reached back, instead of clearing the ball, she moved the ball into her own goal. 8-1 is a scoreline. Nine goals scored so far. This well matchup. For High, uh, as you look back, and the ball Excelsior. passed right back into their own half. And through her legs, and then, wow, that would have been a great strike if she was aiming towards her opponent's goal. She has to feel dejected, has to feel disappointed, but the game continues. Nevertheless, a huge mistake by goalkeeper Goodhall, as the chain is going to be made from Bridgeport. Substitution for Bridgeport. Outcome number 
So Hester coming out. Hester coming out. So foot is over eight. So foot is in. And Hester did not look too good at all when she was taken off the field. So sloppy play from not one team but both teams. That was inexcusable. From goalkeeper Goodall. There you see ball turned back towards the custodian. Bounced awkward, went through her legs. What was she thinking though? And instead of clearing the ball, she could have easily stopped the ball and turned because there was no one approaching her. Buckley loses possession. But one back. Buckley inside the penance area, scooping the ball and right into the midriff of Powell, who goes down a bridgeport. In the meantime, it's going to be another corner to Excelsior. Signal being made by referee Golson to the bench to say, medical team, you are needed. 8-1, the defending champions Excelsior, they lead. Stretcher. Such a bear has been summoned. A lot of time, ex I assume, will be added on to close out this first half. We have seen a few stoppages. And they were not short at all. In the meantime, corner which will be taken by the skipper, Buckley. It's here on your screen, alongside the first assistant, Denton. Swing the ball inside a penalty area. Still four persons in a red shirt converge, but can't clear. Turning. A shot taken, brilliantly done by Smith. Not the first in this game, her second, and her second bomber. Excelsior have increased their lead, nine goals to one, over Bridgeport, that goal coming a minute 34. Cassandra Smith with another bomber, her second of the match, with the left foot. She can belt them, and she's doing that in this matchup. Two goals so far from Smith. Two goals from Seen. Two goals from Buckley. One each from Powell, Price, and Johnson. 9-1. Bridgeport can't clear from their defensive third. No, they have done that. But giving it right back to Excelsior's Johnson. Goal scorer Smith puts it wider left, looking for Seaton. Goes it to Buckley, puts it wider right, brilliantly done, and a shot taken over the crossbar by Shantai Price. That was indeed poor from this young lady who has put her name on the score sheet, wanted to double her personal efforts. So 9 1 is the scoreline of a Bridgeport. So 34 minutes gone inside of this matchup. Oh, what we're seeing here. Francis rolls it finally, but the whistle came before. And Francis. Who has gotten opportunities on opportunities? Still going to be a goal kick, though. Did not reach her own player before it was stolen by Price. The Bridgeport. Another attempt at the goal kick. Stolen again. In 
inside the penalty area. Now see Nerissa Goldson has grown as a referee. Started out shaky. She attended GC Foster College. She learned the craft, learned the art, and has certainly improved. First half coming to a close very soon. In the meantime, here, Excelsior wants more. Francis lays off the possession. Looking for a skipper. Going forward, brilliantly done by Powell. Inside the penalty area, trying to weave her web inside. But was not successful. Smith puts the play inside the penalty area. Looking for the striker, Price. Price lines up, slots to the left of the goalkeeper. And that trickled in like a leaking faucet. But it did the job. As Excelsior, they have reached double figures, leading by 10 goals to 1 in this assertive, friendly society schoolgirls football competition. This is day one in 2023. Minute 37. Sontai Price. Scored in the 37th minute. Player number seven, Shante Price, the scorer. Celsia 10. Celsia 10 in the first Great half. Garvin Maceo winning by 12 goals to one over Central in the Clarendon Derby. Over Bridgeport. Looks dejected, depleted. And everything negative. Foul committed by Francis will be a free kick. She asks referee Golson, what did she do? Having a chuckle in the background. A Smith of Bridgeport. Still laughing, Smith. A friend tackled up. She found it funny. Manly. In the number seven jersey for Bridgeport. His options to her right. Captain. Joe Hagen, where's number 10? Almost gave it away. The clearance deep back inside the own half. Stripped this by Price. Poor cross by Price. Hopefully we can see a clearance from Bridgeport. Oh, Francis turns away from one. Still Francis takes a shot. Uh, hits the left upright and the right and goes out. Francis is there again and she toes it in. So finally, Shyla Francis has put her name on the score sheet. On Excelsior, they lead by 11 goals to one and we're still in first half action. The first attempt hit the left upright and the right. Before going in. <laughs> but after the first effort, the second effort, she went hard because she wanted her name to be on the score sheet. She has got opportunities, opportunities upon opportunities, but finally on target. The score. Here's Excelsior once again. They're leading by 11 goals to 1 in the first half. No look pass. Brilliant, brilliantly done. Saw the intention. This by Powell. Deflected. Goalkeeper is there and turned in. Again, Seaton put her name again on the score sheet. Her third of the matchup in this matchup, minute 40. Tiny Seaton and 12 1 Excelsior, they lead over Bridgeport. Number eight, Tiny Seaton, her third of the afternoon. So she was trying to need that in, but the goalkeeper Mitchell blocking on the first attempt. However, the second, she was nowhere around. 
end of the first half. Witnessed 13 goals, 12 1. The defending champions, Excelsior, they lead over Bridgeport. You see, three goals from Tiny Seaton, two goals from Shanil Buckley and Shantai Price, along with Cassandra Smith. And a goal each from Akila Johnson, Destiny Powell, and Shyla Francis. The defending champions, Excelsior, they have romped in this first half, leading. Oh, 12 goes to 1 over Bridgeport. We take a break. When we come back, it's second half action. It's Issa to Friendly Society Schoolgirls Football Competition, Excelsior and Bridgeport.
Welcome back to St. Up East for second half action. The assertive friendly society. School girls football, should I say, shootout. Oh my word, massacre happening here at St. Up East. Excelsior, the defending champions over Bridgeport, 12-1. And at the halftime break, persons were saying it says so they actually were leading 13 nil because after they scored on themselves, but however, it's still 12 1, except so they have scored all the goals we have seen so far. But just got a call a short while ago, my good friend near Oxford, saying that first game though, where the game that a goal was scored on Garvey, did not see how the goal was scored though, to be honest. And I did say I mix up in the defense, everybody's laughing after me. Oh God, that shot was taken at half line and the goalkeeper held on and threw it back in the goal. But still defence though, to be honest with you, think about it. But that first game, last year's beaten finalist, Gavi Maceo, I thought that was the pinnacle of goal scoring in that first matchup. We see a change being made. So the goalkeeper being substituted. Jaden Mitchell being taken out. And at number 40 coming in for Bridgeport. Kaylee Robinson. That's a Bridgeport now kicking from left to right in the red jersey. You can call them color red. 12 1 is the score line. And you may predict, though, that more goals will be scored in this matchup. Skipper swims the ball inside the penalty area. Over the head, though, of Price, who has scored two goals so far this season. I expect her to score more. Or the team Excelsior, the defending champions, to score more. From 2017 to now, we remember 2017 was... Excelsior won 2018, Excelsior won 2019, Excelsior won no competitions from 2020. Only two games were played or two rounds were played. And in the meantime, cleared by the defense, but not too far though. Defense finally clearing from their defensive third. Robert Pack on the left through their captain, Buckling. Saw the penalty here. Price turns beautifully, lays it off. Shot taken. Went wide off the right upright. Went on the ground though. So it will be Bridgeport's ball goal kick. And just looking back from the competition from 2017, it's also have had their hands on the trophy. They had it before though. They've won 10 times overall since the competition began 25 years ago. Through the legs of Price, offside will be a free kick to Bridgeport inside their penalty area. And the funny thing is that Excelsior they have scored 536 goals in this competition from 2017. And basically two years were not played. Richards, who was their prolific scorer last year, scored over 30 goals, has gone on to university. So a lot of persons who follow girls football were thinking that Excelsior would not be prolific this year. If you saw the goal scorer's sheet for Excelsior, Richards was hands and knees, heads above everyone on that list but she has gone on and the goal scoring has continued you have to ask the question who or what does it point to here comes Excelsior once again chips top of the penalty area controlling beautifully it's dribbling and right into the goalkeeper's path Francis trying to bulldoze her way in and a shot by Francis wide of the right upright. She has put her name on the score sheet in the first half. Shyla Francis. A 
lining up, taking that shot with the left boot was Seaton. But blocked by the custodian, Robinson. Corner taken. Excelsior's possession outside the penalty area. Across the face of goal, but right into the sea of red. Cleared, but brought down beautifully by Smith. Cassandra Smith. Tell you who's her brother in a very short while. Beautifully done. Rolled it top of the penalty area. Pulled it back nicely. And the captain falling over. No whistle on the play. Now the whistle comes, but it goes the other way. That was a clean tackle, though. And we saw Buckley going down. Oh, Francis being fouled. Brought down to the turf by Manley. A free. Golson just having a word with Manley. As Francis, still on the turf, still on the ground. Takes her sweet time to go back on her feet. It's still 12 1. It's a score line. That's the score at the end of the first half. He's having a chuckle though, not with what I just saw a while ago, to thinking back on what was said in that first game. In Central, got a goal. A free kick to be taken by Powell. Swings towards goal, held cleanly by Robinson. Looks a little bit competent than what we saw from Mitchell earlier on. Robinson introduced in the second half, but gave it all away. Excelsior once again. Puts the play right in the form of Price. And the cross blocked. And you have to ask the question, is the handball or not? But the player is down though, and the call made to the bench. Stretcher bearers are running on the field. I seem like the player is okay. And stretcher bearers run on. And it says, I'm okay. Robinson looks very equipped. Moving well to collect that ball. Come on, come on. He stands between the two sticks introduced in the second half, replacing Mitchell for Bridgeport. A corner to Excelsior on the right. 12 1 their lead. That was a score in the first game where last year's been finalist, Garvey Maceo, trounced Central. So it did. Turning away from one, beautifully done. Captain Buckley put to the right. A shot taken off the right boot of Johnson, blocked. Celsia back in possession. Another shot taken, another block. And it will be a throw. Standing strong in defense is Smith, who's their striker, but has played majority of the game in her own half. Or floated across the face of goal. They hit pretty hard though. And we see Seaton could not reach it. So it will be a goal kick to Bridgeport. I was really good for it. Tackling and winning the possession. Skipper shot. Cleared by custodian Robinson. Collected. Price. Powell. Can't bring it down. Now it is. Across the face of goal. One touch. A chip by the captain. And it almost towed in. And went wide. Off the left upright. Missing another opportunity was Price. It 
wide of the left upright. Excelsior have been getting opportunities. And a beautiful goal going around the defender who stood like it was Sunday afternoon. And Excelsior, they have upped the ante somewhat, leading by 13 goals to one. And the defender coming forward to slot home. Francis gets her second goal of the matchup. So Francis, striker, not defender. So 13-1 is the scoreline. Excelsior over Bridgeport. As you look back on the goal, she tried it in the first half twice. Did not work. On her third attempt, robbing the last one standing. Slotting home. Number 12. Francis turning. Rolling now looking for Seaton. Controlling. Rolls it back to Francis. Controlling. Turns. Robbed of the possession. Bridgeport can counter. Goes by Smith. But is tackled up strong. And the ball put back down in the half of Bridgeport. That was a strong tackle by Mignot, a national. On the 17 player. All smiles from Mignot. I'd have called a mine up though. Francis with the foul. A free kick to Bridgeport just outside their own penalty area. Referee Goldson. Points up field. That's it before though about the Excelsior teams going over 500 goals over it's going to be three seasons. In the meantime, Buckley inside the penalty area. On her right boot, she takes a shot. Oh, that was a thunderous effort saved by Robinson off the right boot of Powell. Went over the goal line, should be a corner. Signal now by the second assistant, Robinson. So another corner to Excelsior. Corner comes inside the penalty area. One time effort now. And a shot right into the graph or the path of Robinson. Francis again. She has gotten at least 12 opportunities in this matchup. And I'm not exaggerating. Shot towards goal over the crossbar. Might have the goal though off the right boot of Johnson. If you remember a footballer by the name of Shai Smith. Was an excellent player. This mining cup. And went to Portmore. His sister actually plays for Excelsior. Cassandra Smith. So substitution coming in, ringing in for Excelsior. Substitution, double substitution so for Excelsior. Francis number coming out. Shante Price. Shante Price going out. Number 12, Shiloh Francis. Being replaced nice. by number 15. 15. Yes. And number so 18. Giovanni Rose. Top the two shots in the 54 minutes. Ashanta Price, Brianna Smith. Smith in. Price out. 13 1 is the scoreline. From what we witnessed in the first half, the tempo has died down somewhat in this matchup. Skipper towards goal and hits the palm of Robinson, hits the right upright, 
and goes in. But a signal by the referee, Golson, signals what? I'm confused. Didn't the ball go in the goal? It should be a goal. Why is she seeing as a corner? Isn't that a goal? That's a goal, of course. Referee goes to thought it went out for a corner. But that's a 14th goal. Excelsior, they lead by 14 goals to one. Hit the palm of Robinson. And Buckley with another goal, our third of the match, and went behind her inside of the right upright, not outside. So 14 1 Excelsior, they lead. But my thinking is that she saw the goalkeeper go into the goal to retrieve the ball. So, unless the ball has the net has a leak. Or a tear, why the goal will be, or oh, the ball will be in the goal. So I'm confused why she called. Ball number 14 for Excelsior, coming in the 50th minute. Number 10, Shamir Buckley, with a first goal for Excelsior. Excelsior, they lead by 14 goals to 1. Excelsior, 14, brings for 1. 14-1, it's a score. No long range effort stolen somewhat by Smith. Pulls it back beautifully in front of goal. And that's the 15th. That is the 15th slotted home by the big strong striker. Excelsior has certainly moved in this second half. I said before. that they were playing within themselves as Smith who just came on the park and now added another to the toll 51 in the scoreline so play continues in the second half Anna Smith who just came on the park the captain herself Buckley holds up the playing Across the face of goal, one time effort did not go toward goal, went away from Buckley. Top of the penalty area, spanking towards goal, blocked and now cleared by Bridgeport outside the penalty area. Excelsior back in possession, swings the play on the right hand side. Beautiful ball on the right boot of Johnson, pulls it back and a shot. Again, coming from Smith, it was blocked, went outside. Should be a corner though. Corner for Excelsior. The collision between herself and the defender from Bridgeport. Was still a 15-1 scoreline in the second half. Also inside the penalty area, one time effort. And go keep sure. Robinson was there, but can't hold on. Turning away beautifully. That's the skipper. Pulls it back. Controlling. Shot. Wide. Shakira Richards, number 16. She hasn't been in the game that much though, Richards. So, substitutions will be ringing out once again. So, it seems like Powell will be coming out, Ariana Powell. And going in, number 11. 
of Vanessa Bernard. Cesar will be making their changes also. Fourteen and thirteen coming in. Number five going out. That's McNutt. National on a seventeen there. So thirteen came on. Tell who she came on for in a very short while. On a floaty table from left to right. Stopped by the defense of Bridgeport. Trying to get themselves some composure in this matchup. Sasa in possession, one touch. Another substitution for Sasa in the 60th minute. Number five. Was it back? Neil Hinton is replaced by number 13, number 14, Gabriel Burke. Burke and coming in. Number 16. Shakira Richards. Shakira Richards is out. Replaced by number 13, Makaria Williams. So Williams. Wild for Bridgeport. Success of making four changes so far in this matchup. 13, Ariana Howell. She was in this is a tip-friendly society schoolgirls football Bernard. competition. Substitutions to play to the 60th inning. Ball swung inside the penalty area between the two defenders. Smith is there. Pulls it back top of the penalty area. Shot towards goal. And a brilliant save by Robinson. Hitting her palm. Pushing over the crossbar. But she's feeling the effects. She's feeling the effects from that shot. From Johnson. Akila Johnson from just outside the penalty area. She looks uncomfortable. Flashing her hands. But she's still standing strong for Bridgeport. That was a very good save from Robinson. Seemed like she was celebrating the save or so than flashing the hands. Corner to Excelsior. The lead by 15 goes to one. Inside the penalty area, controlling beautifully and slotting home. Oh, it hit the left upright. I thought it had gone in, hit the left upright and turned over the goal line i thought it was going to be a goal kick though if you look on the replay the skipper buckley went across the goal but it said it came off the defender manly for bridgeport corner taken flows across the face of goal skipper buckley between two defenders is of the possession to smith smith takes a shot chips it in to the back of the net Brilliantly done by Cassandra Smith. Her third goal of the matchup and her team's 16th. Many may say 17th. But Cassandra Smith in the 62nd. Excelsior, they are rolling along. 16 goals to 1 over Bridgeport. We said before we'd be having a goal feast, but I never expected anything like this. This is not a feast at all. It's more than a barbecue. Salsa, brilliantly done by Buckley. Oh, goes around two ever so sweetly. Lines up, takes a shot, hits the right upright. Add on to goalkeeper Robinson, but the ball's still in play. Shot deflected, almost gone, gone in. Sixteen goal for Excelsior coming in the sixteen. Sixteen one is a scoreline. Lying it up, takes a shot wide of the left upright of the right boot of Cassandra Smith, who has scored three goals so far this afternoon. The defending champions, Excelsior, rocking and rolling. Salsa. Going by one, going by two, ever so sweetly by Johnson. Across the face of goal, Smith turns around on a right boot. She lines up, lays it across, still inside the penalty area. Shot taken, and that's a 17th. 
That's a 17th. Powell slots home. Powell slots home, and that's her second of the match, a minute 64. Destiny Powell with her second of the match and her team's 17th goal in this matchup, 17 1, they lead over Bridgeport. It is the Issa Tip Friendly Society Schoolgirls Football Competition, day one. All on the ground with all of the defenders are standing inside the penalty area. Here comes Excelsior once again inside the penalty area, pulls it back to Smith, back heels, ran into a Red Brigade Stonewall. Excelsior, they have won by the possession, going by one, going by two. Brilliantly done by Powell, and a shot by Powell deflected outside for another corner to Excelsior. Seems like she has hurt herself. Powell. Well, she's sitting down, just seems like she is grimacing somewhat, but she has gotten up. Corner taken. Excelsior in possession. Eagles soaring high, shot taken, blocked again by the defense of Bridgeport. Seems like she is in a bit of pain though. That's Kirkland. She comes back to the to defend. Turning away from one. Finding Smith, a shot chipping onto the crossbar. Celsia <laughs> back in possession. Brilliant ball being played inside to Buckley. On the left, pulls it back. Finding Smith, lines up and slots onto the left upright, going in to increase Excelsior's lead to 18 over one over Bridgeport. This is a friendly society schoolgirls football competition, and it is Smith's fourth goal of this matchup. Can you count along? So, 13 goals scored in the first game, 19 goals so far in the second. The defending champions showing their true metal leading by 18 goals to one over Bridgeport side footing home hitting hitting the inside of the left upright going in Cassandra Smith one Keila Johnson two for Price three for Seton, three for Buckley, two for Powell, two for Francis, and one for Smith. Liana Smith, who came on in the second half. Bleak conditions over Stadium East. As the game winds down, though, here comes Buckley once again. Goes of the play, somewhat turns from two defenders, or the pass between the legs of Smith. But Bridgeport, they failed to clear from inside the penalty area. Still, Playing around the possession, and so they won it back. Inside the penalty area, slots. Oh my word. Easy does it. The 19th goal for Excelsior to one for Bridgeport is Issa to Friendly Society. This is the schoolgirls football competition. And another goal, this for Powell, her third of the match. 68 minutes gone, call it 69. Paul slotting home easily. To the left of goalkeeper Robinson. Number 11, Destin Powell, with a third goal of the contest coming in the 68th minute. Now, Seltzer, 19. So, 19 1. Wow. Did you ever think you'll see a day like this when Excelsior is not thrashing but walloping, bamboozling Bridgeport 
with this 91 scoreline. Smith lays it off, top of the penalty area once again. They search for another goal. Left footed drive by Johnson going wide off the left or the right upright. Nineteen one. Wow. I thought witnessing thirteen goals in the first half. Substitution. So Ricketts. On. Number six. Alex Elsa having possession once again, twisting and turning at Smith. Can't going, go forward with Johnson. Back to Smith on her right boot. She lines up, takes a shot, and that's another goal. That's another goal for Smith, another goal for Excelsior. I said before, bamboozling, lashing, but it's more than that. They've upped the ante from bamboozling. They've upped the ante from lashing. It's a walloping on this Wednesday afternoon. Excelsior leading by... 20 goals to one over Bridgeport. So one more goal. To Smith. Five goals on the day. Here's Smith once again. Just up, just left. She puts it forward. Powell. Goes by one, still Powell. But goalkeeper to be 21. 21 to one. So another goal is coming from Powell. And now it's goal 20. 21 to 1. So Destiny Powell with her fourth goal of this matchup. Are you kidding me? So 22 goals scored so far in this game. This is a swamping from Excelsior over Bridgeport. Bridgeport seems like they've given up. When they're still playing, though, credit to them, not everyone would be playing when they're under 21 goals. But they're still continuing, still fighting. The color red doing what they can do. The ball put forward, Excelsior on the attack again. Person are saying 22. Oh, that was careless as not the greatest decision at all by Seaton. Seaton could have pulled it back. He had Smith in the middle. Instead, she went on her merry way and ran out of real estate. So still a 21-1, Excelsior they lead. For Bridgeport, if you're just joining our broadcast, no. We're not making a mistake. It is 21-1. Smith lines up again, lays off the possession. Thought of a back heel, skipper. Now in the form of Johnson. Johnson's shot goes in. Beating goalkeeper Robinson. And Johnson scoring her second goal of this matchup. So are we going to 50 this afternoon? Are we staying in the 20s? That's the question we asked by some supporters in the stands. Back heel by Buckley. Finding Keena Johnson for a second goal of this matchup. 22-1. Excelsior, their lead over Bridgeport. Smith going forward. Sasa once again broken up while the defender just came on. Ricketts. Cleared. A shot by Smith. And it goes in. It goes in. I can't believe it. A shot by Smith. <laughs> Her sixth goal of this matchup. And Excelsior leading 23 to 1. I am in awe of this performance from Excelsior. Bridgeport. Shell shot. So we see the time winding down. 
And I know that the Bridgeport supporters, Bridgeport players, are just looking at the clock, hoping that the final whistle comes quick. In the first game, though, it was 30 minutes a half because of the late start. One of the teams arrived late. So that's why normally a 40 minute game. Here comes Excelsior once again inside the penalty area. Counter long. Oh, goalkeeper Robinson. The applause go out. She stopped one. But she has been doing okay, though. She pushed one over the crossbar earlier on. Skipper. Buckley lays it off. Powell back to Buckley. Skips over one challenge, cuts inside, goes by another. No look pass inside to Smith, pulls it right back to Buckley inside the penalty area. One touch back to Buckley, back towards her opponent's goal. She's straight to the possession and they've left it alone all for Smith. Oh my word, the whistle did not blow and a shot by Smith and that's another goal. The 24th goal of this matchup, this is a massacre. Smith with another goal. They said six, but her status has raised to seven. Cassandra Smith with seven goals in this matchup. Not this season, because this is the first game. 24 to one, excels so their lead over Bridgeport. Smith, Cassandra Smith, number nine. She was apologizing. The defender was apologizing, not realizing that the game was still being played. After winning the possession, the defender went across to look on the player was down to see if she was okay, not realizing the game was still in play. Excelsior once again to Friendly Society. Have to big up our sponsors, though. The Friendly Society. Tip. Here comes Excelsior once again, the captain, Buckley, lays the cross, and a shot, wide of the left, upright. Big smile on the face, the defending champions, putting in a statement, and that shot by Smith, who scored earlier on, coming on in the second half. Well, making a statement or not, it's a massacre on a Wednesday. Excelsior once again with a skipper inside a penalty area turns away Buckley no not one not two and it's towed away thought he came off Buckley did it or it did not it's looking on the officials because the other way though Excelsior's ball such as throw Smith Powell inside the penalty area and a shot and another goal could i say that a shot and another goal 25 1 i said that for the rest of the afternoon so smith so there you see the goal scorer powell that's actually not paul actually smith liana smith who came out in the second half that's her second goal of the match. A slotting pass goalkeeper Robinson. And I must add though, that's a Number substitute 50, goalkeeper. Bridgeport is in the half of Excelsior, something Bridgeport, that they've done rare in this game. Beautiful ball by the captain Buckley. Swinging to play on the right hand side. Excelsior back inside the penalty area. Smith lurking at the top of the penalty area, controlling, going by one, and met with a crowd or a sea of red. She ran out of real estate though, trying to do a bit too much, and it will be Bridgeport's ball. In minute 78, and I saw the coach earlier on looking at his clock, maybe praying for the time to come. 25-1, Excelsior their lead. Cleared. Excelsior, who scored one in the first half through the goalkeeper's legs. And the goalkeeper could have either stopped the ball, turn around. She booted the ball right in her own goal. Ball, a beautiful ball, kneeling through right to the captain, Buckley. 
stick to the possession. She was blocked. Not a foul though. Lines up, takes a shot. Oh, push onto the crossbar. Not a goal. Then the second attempt. Now in the form of Buckley who holds on. That was a brilliant save by Robinson. Pushed onto the crossbar. Shot taken. Hit the right upright. Smith takes a shot and a save by Robinson over the crossbar and the applause ring out inside the stadium east it's a tip friendly society school girls football competition the 2023 edition and what a save by Robinson moving and push the ball over the crossbar ball floated at the back post change the control Turning away, skipper Buckley. Oh, turning up from one Buckley, that was sweet. Now finding Smith outside the penalty area, rolls it to her right inside the penalty area. Shot taken over the crossbar. It's a goal kick, we're a minute 80 of this matchup. And that was seen with that shot. I've been a word. With our teammates and referee Golson. 25 1. After a 12 1 scoreline in the first game by last year's beaten finalist Garvey Maceo over Central in the Clarendon Derby, we're witnessing something horrific for Bridgeport. See, now they're confused. That's it. And they must have a sigh of relief. The massacre is over. 25-1, Excelsior. They won at Bridgeport in the second game of two. What the game we had here. Seven goals from Cassandra Smith, who led the way. But all the goal scorers, Keila Johnson with two. Shante Price with two. Tiny Seaton with three. You have Buckley with three. Powell, Destiny Powell with four goals. Francis scoring two goals. And Liana Smith also with two goals. Those were the 25 goals we witnessed from Excelsior. And if you want to put the own goal in it to say they witnessed 26 goals from Excelsior, you can. But what a game we had here. Excelsior with a massacre over Bridgeport, winning by 25 goals to one on this glorious Wednesday. But that signals the start of the 2023 edition of the Easter Tip Friendly Society School Girls Football Competition. 12 1 in the first game, where the last year has been finest, Garvey, they won over Central. 25 1 in the second, for the defending champions, Excelsior, they won over Bridgeport. On that note, from Salem East, we leave you with the news that Excelsior. And who Garvey Masser are the winners on the day 12 1 from Garvey, 25 1 from Excelsior. <coughs>